friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. This video is a tool comparison. There is no actual work done in this video. It's just information for you in case you're out to purchase a good handheld router. Either a Dremel or a Proxon. And that's the two I'm comparing. And I'll be comparing a high-end Dremel with, a hot, with their top-of-the-line Proxon tool. Before we get started into this review, I just want to say that I did buy both of these tools with my own money. There is no sponsorship involved here whatsoever. I get no kickback whatsoever. In a recent video, I was routing the binding slot for a guitar and the bit slipped. Now, I have to take blame for that, I guess. Uh, I thought my drill chuck would have been tight enough to hold the drill bit, but apparently it wasn't. I had a, a drill chuck end on the end of the Dremel rather than a collet chuck. Collet chucks are much stronger apparently, and uh, I, you know, probably knew that anyway, but thought that the drill chuck tightened down with the pliers would have been good enough. Apparently it wasn't, so it slipped. Well, that was my fault. That wasn't the tool's fault. But it sparked a bunch of comments, and I say a bunch, I'm talking about probably only like three that were serious comments that said, get rid of that Dremel and get yourself a Proxon. You need a professional tool, not that hobbyist tool. I thought, you know what, I've been wanting a second one anyway. The reason I want two of them is I can leave one set up as with a base on it, and I can have the other one to hold in my hand, okay? So, that way, you know, I don't have to switch back and forth all the time and I can kind of like leave one set up for binding work and, you know, that kind of thing and for typical routing of peg heads and inlay work and things like that. So, it just, it would save a lot of time. Well, I looked at the Proxon online because I'd never really seen one or used one. I watched some tool reviews and, of course, I watched the tool review by Crimson Guitar and uh, the fellow there did a good job reviewing it. I think he was an honest reviewer. I think uh, everything he said was true. But I, I'm here to tell you right now, you're going to see a 180 degree difference in our reviews. And the reason is it's not because I think he did anything wrong. It's just because we're comparing different tools. The Dremel I have is the professional model Dremel, and the Dremel he had, I would say, was probably a hobby hobbyist level Dremel tool. The one I have is a Dremel 4000. Now, it's really old, and I haven't looked online. This I have no need to look online, you understand, to see what their current models are. I'm talking about the Dremel I have and the people calling it a hobbyist tool. So I am just comparing what I have with the professional Proxon, period. I've got, I've got no dog in this fight, if you will. Uh, you know, I needed a second tool. I was going to buy a second tool anyway, so I bought the Proxon based on, you know, reviews I saw. I'm not disappointed with buying the Proxon or anything like that, but I do want to shed a different light on you know, the experience here so that everybody can see it, I think, in a more open, fair light. And we're going to compare facts, not just opinions. As a matter of fact, I don't think really any of this is opinion. I think it's just black and white fact. So that way, if you decide to buy something like this, you'll be better informed. First of all, the Dremel I have is, it is called a Dremel 4000. Now, I haven't looked online. I don't know if they even still sell this tool. This is probably 15 years old. I use it a lot. If you've watched very many of the videos that I've put out, you've seen this tool in a fairly high percentage of those videos. I use it a lot. It, there's rarely a day goes by in this shop that I don't use this tool. Now, keep in mind, it's at least 15 years old. And I still use it just about every day. So it's been a very good tool, very dependable tool. I have nothing bad to say about this tool whatsoever. On the other hand, I just bought this tool, this Proxon, and as you can see, it's got their name there, the Proxon, and there's the specs that I'll put on camera there that you can see. Now, Let's just digress for just a second and set some 
level playing field here so that everybody knows what we're talking about. First of all, this comparison is for corded tools only. Just talking about these specific tools right here. Secondly, anytime you're buying a corded power tool, well, meaning that you plug it into the wall, there's at least one thing you should pay attention to, and that is the amperage rating. If you were going to buy one of those kinds of circular saws that you operate by hand that plugs into the wall, and let's say everything is equal, the thing to look at is the amperage rating. If the price is roughly the same or even slightly higher for the one with the higher amperage, buy the one with the higher amperage. In other words, if this one says it's $125 and it's 9 amps, this one's $135 but it's at 11 amps, you will be happy if you buy the 11 amp saw. There's a significant difference in power when you buy a higher amperage rating. That's a very significant factor when you're buying a power tool that plugs into the wall. Pay attention to the amperage rating. All things being equal, always buy the one with the higher amperage and you'll thank me later. Okay, now having t said that and set that as a standard, let's compare the amperage ratings on these two tools. Okay, the amperage rating on this Dremel, and I'll hold it up where you can see it, is 1.6 amps. Hopefully the camera will focus on that. But if you look at the top line there, it says 1.6 amps. Okay, that's pretty good for a tiny tool, 1.6 amps. The amperage rating on the Proxon, if you look right there, you can see it is only 0.9 amps. So, that's seven tenths or three quarters of an amp less. That's fairly significant when you're talking low amperage. This, I guarantee you, has less power than this. Just flat guarantee. Now, this tool's much newer. Uh, you know, they make advancements all the time. You know, you can argue all day long, but I'm telling you, amperage is where it's at when it comes to power tools. One of the factors that the fellow from Crimson Guitar talked about was the noise level. No question about it, this one's much louder. This one's much quieter. But I suspect part of that is the power, but I can tell you a huge amount of it is the RPMs. This one goes up to 20,000 RPMs. Not bad, not shabby, but this one goes up to 30,000 RPMs. Significantly different. Okay, so let's plug them both in and let's listen to the sound and uh, see what the difference is. I'm going to start them both off at their lowest rating at 5,000 RPMs. Both of them have a 5,000 RPM minimum speed. So let's turn on the Proxon you can see that this is a very quiet machine. Very quiet. That's 5,000. Now we'll turn on the Dremel at 5,000. Significantly louder. No question about it. You can't even hear this one beside this one. There's no question. So the Proxon definitely wins on volume. Now let's turn them on and let's go up to their, their 20,000 RPMs and we'll turn this one up to 20,000 as well. There's 5,000 and there we're increasing it up. There's about 10,000. There's 20,000. Still very quiet in my opinion. All right, here's the 5,000 on the Dremel. Now there's the 20,000 on the Dremel. Much louder, no question about it. I'll turn this one on. Again, you can barely hear this one compared to this one. No question about it. But, that's just 20,000. Let's go up to 30.
you know, there's a significant difference in speed. This one can really get going. And, and sometimes I think that's very valuable. Uh, you know, especially when you're doing very detailed work, I like to have that speed up there very fast. Uh, cuts a cleaner deal, you know. Um, you know, sometimes you can't use that high speed, but you can always turn it down. Okay, so what have we learned? This one's definitely quieter. This one has much more RPMs. This one has much more power, in my opinion, because of the amperage. Now, let's talk about the aesthetics. This one looks nice. I think this one looks nice, too. I don't think there's much difference in the looks. How about the feel? Well, I got to tell you something. In my opinion, this one falls very short on the feel. Now, as a router base, no problem. But if you're going to hold this in your hand, I got to tell you, this thing is slicker than snot on a doorknob. It wants to slide right out of your hand. It's There's a taper to it. You can see the taper. And it just, the tighter you squeeze it and, the, and as slick as it is, the more it wants to slide back out of your hand. It's just not that great. Now, if you hold it up here, sure. But I like to hold them down here like this, like a pencil, because I'm down here doing detail work. I'm not back here trying to do detail, where that just doesn't work. You know, you, you, if you're gonna write with a pencil, you don't hold it at the eraser, you know. So you want to hold it down here and do, you know, your detail work. This thing is not user-friendly, in my opinion, at all in that regard. In fact, I'll never use it that way. I'll never use it that way. It just isn't. It's, you're talking about apples and oranges. This is an onion and this is an apple. This one, on the other hand, it has got a grip, a sure grip, and it's rubberized. You can't drop this. You couldn't pull this out of your hand. You, it's just made to hold and do detail work, period. No question about it. This one, I'd give this one a 10. On that regard, I'd give this one a 1. I mean, it's that significantly different, in my opinion. Speaking of the casing and everything, people say, well, this is metal, you know, much better. Well, okay, so it is. It's metal, but it's slick. <laughs> this one is not just a cheap plastic. This is a rubberized, you know, coated plastic, very stout, very heavy. In fact, I'm pretty positive, and I, you know, I'm just going by this. I'm pretty positive this one weighs more than this one. This one feels more skookum, as AVE would say, than this one does. Let's get the scale out and weigh them. I have not weighed them before, so I have no idea. We're going to weigh these in grams because it's a little more precise. That one weighs 602 grams. This one weighs 498 grams. Significantly different. Now, you might say lighter is better. Well, you know, I can't hardly argue that. I would prefer to be lighter, I guess. But you can tell you got something in your hand when you're holding on to this. I mean, it definitely has some power. It definitely has a feel. It's got some torque. When you turn it on, you can actually feel it, you know, turn on and twist, actually. I wanted to compare one more part of these. Uh, just, I think it's a fair comparison, and that is the way you tighten the tool down. I'm not crazy about this, but I guess it could grow on me. This is, uh, you know, like if you have a big circle on here, you can't get this on. So it's made where it slides over the shaft of the tool. Then it drops down onto the spindle. You push this button here to hold the, the, the shaft, and then you turn it by hand. Now, there's not very much leverage there, but there's enough. And I'm assuming that that's all the leverage they want you to use. You know, it's just what you have in your fingers and this size of this. It tightens down real tight, don't get me wrong. But it, it just seems weird, you know? I mean, it's just a weird feeling thing rather than having an actual wrench that you could torque down. The Dremel does the exact same thing, but it has a wrench. Now, maybe I'm just used to this because like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years. And so you would do the exact same thing. You push the same, same kind of button and then you have your wrench to torque it down. But you can torque down pretty good with that wrench. And uh, I feel real secure with that. 
I'm not sure how I feel about this yet, but it feels like it gets really tight. So I'm assuming this is fine. For the sake of comparison too, I told you that I like this one much better and I will always use this one for my detailed hand routing. Okay, a lot of people have said, you shouldn't be using that. You should be using a flexible shaft deal with the small handle. Eh, I don't like those. I've got two of them. I converted one to work on my metal lathe, believe it or not, uh, to true up the jaws on my metal lathe. And the other one I wore out, actually. It just doesn't really work very well anymore. They get hot in your hand. I don't like them. I just don't like them. I don't like that stiff cable. Uh, it doesn't, you know, you think, well, that's going to be real flexible. It's not that flexible. I don't care for it. I have giant hands, really big fingers. This just feels like a pencil in my hand, and there's no, there's nothing in my way. Yeah, you got your cord, but that cord is so flexible, you don't even feel it. So I hope you see that all those things I'm talking about are facts. Now, granted, this slick feel and the feel of it, you could call that opinion if you want, but just grab a hold of it and grab a hold of this one and you'll know what I'm telling you is, the, is a black and white fact. Other than that one incident, this thing pretty much outshines this thing in every regard except sound. This is much quieter. No question about that part at all. Having said all that, am I happy I purchased this? Yeah, I am happy I purchased this. And the reason is I needed a second tool. I like the router base that comes with this. At least I think I do. I haven't used it much yet. But I got to tell you, there were some issues with it too. So I'm going to point those out right now. Keep in mind, this is a very flat Formica table. I even scraped it with a with a razor blade to make sure there was no glue or any residue on this and that it was good and flat. And out of the box, this thing rocked significantly. Um, when, I, when I did this, it just rocked. And it still rocks a little bit. So what I did was, I took some 220 sandpaper and I just did this. And you can see, you may not be able to see it, but you can see it coming off high here in the center. And, uh, you know, it just, you want this thing flat. You know, if you're doing super detailed routing like I do, there's no room for anything rocking. So after I did that, it sets much flatter. And even that helped it some more right there. So it's setting much, much flatter. Then it was very sharp to the touch all the way around and around here too. I mean, it's almost sharp enough you could cut yourself. So I took a very small half round needle file and knocked off, deburred the whole thing. Also, the reason I did that wasn't so much for the feel, it's because I'm putting this on a peg head of a guitar and I'll be sliding it around and I don't want it to scratch up anything. So now it's much better. But I gotta tell you, I'm still a little, shy about doing it because it's still metal and metal's good but metal scratches so i'm tempted to put a plastic coating on this and i don't know how i'll do that yet might even just be tape i don't know but something i may have to do something with that bottom because you can hear it here you know and and that's think of that rubbing on your peg head of your guitar that's not a good thing Conversely, I made this uh, plastic base for the, this is the Stumac base for this Dremel. I, there's things I like about this and things I don't like about this. But this is, uh, you know, and it makes noise going around too, but that plastic is so much slicker. There's less friction. This doesn't scratch anything for sure because it's plastic. So I may, you know, try to do something for that later. But to be honest, this is such a complicated base, it would be difficult to replicate it and make a better one. So I may have to live with it and maybe just put some kind of a coating on the bottom of it. I'm not sure. If someone has a good suggestion for that, I'd like to hear it. So I spent all yesterday afternoon making this attachment for this base. I machined it on my milling machine and this base, 
uses the technology that they have designed into this base and that is these two rods slide back and forth through here and I'm, I even made the rods and then they slide through and you can this little guide here will go against the guitar and then what's left over is the binding slot right there so you can slide this right over the bit and I still have enough room there I could probably slide it that way I could probably route almost a well about a 3 8 inch wide binding and 3 8 would be pretty wide so this should work pretty well for me and it gets this very close to the bit which is critical especially if you're on any kind of angle at all the base is kind of small in this area so that's the only negative it would be nice if I could extend this base out to be just a little bit bigger but I don't know how I could do that very very easily with the technology they have here you can slide this in and out and then just tighten these set screws and then that makes a very accurate uh, you know guide for routing the binding slot on the side of a guitar or the peg head or wherever you're working so I did spend a lot of time making that but I feel like this is a superior setup to what I've been doing with this which basically I just clamp something similar on here. I just take two C clamps and clamp it on here like so. And that works, but it's much harder to adjust. It's uh, prone to slippage possibly. You know, I haven't had much problem with it slipping or anything, but it's just difficult to adjust. This is much easier to adjust and much more accurate, I think. So I'm very happy I bought the Proxon from that standpoint. All I've done with it so far is test it using this and it works pretty well. I do notice there's a difference in power. This is definitely not as powerful as this. So to those folks who said this was a hobby tool, sorry, you don't know what you're talking about. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you feel like it was a fair comparison and maybe it'll help you decide what to buy. Definitely always look at the amperage rating when you're buying a plug-in type power tool. You'll be happy you did. Thanks for watching.